No, it was 250 hymnals. Yes, we were promised delivery on Monday, and they haven't yet arrived. Thank you very much. Goodbye. You still here? Uh, I'll put your service on in a few minutes. Um, your shirt should be ready tomorrow, and Mother Superior insists that you get back to her today. Where's Monsignor Fazio? He went to the diocesan luncheon, Your Excellency. Until 6 o'clock? He had a diocesan cocktail party after. I answered his correspondence for the day. Yours is on your desk. Sign them for me. Yes, Your Excellency. Good afternoon, Bishop Campbell's office. Good night, Father. Good night. You said this is Jeannie. I've just been a priest for a little over a year now. I love my work, Father. I know the bishop can be difficult at times, but when you think of all the good work he's done, then I just don't understand why he won't let me learn how to work a word processor. I mean, sometimes I feel like I just need a change. Is that wrong? Well, because he has his reasons. All right, everyone, closing time. Mr. Chu. Can you hear me? Six o'clock. It's enough blue tarp for one day. If you want to ride home. Almost finished. Maybe tomorrow. You know, you've been saying maybe tomorrow for almost two years. And one tomorrow, I'm gonna be right. Ask him about the word processing class. Honey, do you know where Al's bowl is? Catch it. Good boy. Well, I'll just use a dish. And I did ask. I'm proud of you. Don't be. He said no. The bishop won't let you take the course? Why? He can't afford to let me go for two weeks. It's not his fault. Oh, well, don't let him make you feel bad, honey. Never mind that you run the whole archdiocese practically by yourself. Never mind that you only ask Thanks, for a little... That makes me feel a lot better. Look, dinner tonight. The sky's the limit. I'll cook whatever you want. Why don't we just order in? Better yet. Then we can get started peeling the wallpaper. What goes good with wallpaper? Chinese. Great. I love Chinese. Then again, Mrs. Lavin says she sometimes takes her exercise class to a great pizza place around the corner. Wonderful. Italian's great. I'm starved. Then again, Chinese is lighter. What do you think? I don't want. No, no, you choose. Your pick. Chinese. Yeah, Chinese, definitely. First preview of layer five, where would you place it? Early 30s? We're going to be in our early 70s by the time we finish this. Nikki, we should have had a professional do it. What? And let him destroy this wonderful molding? Oh, that is ugly, huh? Let's sneak a peek at the next layer. No peaks. It's like a box of candy. You can't just dive down to the bottom layer to see what's there. That's well, past my bedtime, so I'm going to go upstairs and attempt to somehow fall asleep. Okay. Hook the L up before you go up, will you? He's getting awfully messy. Come on, boy. Come on. Jan! Jan! Come in here and look at 
Come on, it's time to go to bed. Look at this. Blood? Lipstick, I think. A will. A will on the wall undiscovered for 60 years. Maxie. Give me this. Some kid who stole his mother's lipstick and wrote on the wall. Let's leave it up for a while. It's like antique graffiti. Read it and weep. What could that mean? Yo! Mrs. Lavin. More food. Please come in, Mrs. Lavin. <laughs> you radiate such a lovely aura, dear. <laughs> Thank you. Isn't she Jonathan? Is Jonathan your husband? Not for about 47 years. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Oh, that's okay. He was dead a couple of years before he knew it. Thanks for the goodies. Yeah. Leftovers for my exercise class. It's the only way I can get him to move. Give him a ding-dong. Make him feel guilty for eating it. Then you should see those ladies burn. Uh -huh. Why don't you sit down? Do you understand what it means? I can remember this like it was yesterday, like it was five minutes ago. Jan, she knew him. Him! That was no him. That was a her with a capital H. Maxine Malone. After all these years. Why don't you write, read it and weep? We were a team. I was Trudy Lisco, the toast of Frisco. And she was simply known all over town as Maxie. We had a song and dance act over the old Alcazar Theater. How did she die? Nick. No, no, it's good. It's good to remember. She took a break from the act to do a bit part in a silent picture, Flapper Melodies. She was only in this one big party scene, but she was such a humdinger, they gave her a line. Did she die while she was making the movie? Uh, no, 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 picture wasn't even out. D.W. Griffith decided to screen test her for a starring role. Maxie knew she was going to get it, and the very night she's leaving for Hollywood, she threw a hell of a party, got real tanked up, wrote that on the wall. Then she drove down the coast highway, headed right into a tree, never even knew what hit her. Premonition, it had to be. <laughs> Poor Maxie never even got to see the one movie she was in. Oh, Mrs. Lavin, we didn't mean to bring up any sad memories. Oh, no, not at all. Oh, I contact Maxie all the time. She'd be thrilled such a nice young couple has her apartment uncovered a wall. Maybe I'll go upstairs and summon her spirit right now. I won't be able to reach Mr. Lavin. It's past his bedtime. Nikki. Our landlady talks to spirits. <laughs> it's a sad story, though. Mrs. Lavin? No, the wall. Whew, the whole thing gives me the creeps. Honey, this is the last vestige of Maxine Malone. You're not going to get one of your things about her, are you? Of course not. She's been dead for ages. Somebody should tell Mrs. Lavin that. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Good night, honey. Good night. I'll clean up a little first. See you tomorrow, Father. Um, Bye. Uh... Guess what I have behind my back? 
Two round trip tickets to Mexico. Silent film classics from the 20s. I rented at Max's movie. That was gonna be my second guess. Three days. The Daily City station's gonna be closed till further notice. Oh, I'm so sorry you have a rash, Your Excellency. I specifically said no start. Come on, come on. Yes, good night, Your Excellency. And in Miami? Just a little bit of baby powder. All right, good night. I know, I know. But who else can he call? ...responded requiring police to calm the mob. These stories and more tonight from Channel 4 News. I'll feed Alan and open another bottle. Yell if the party scene comes on. Okay. Did you like that? Was this good? Roll over. Come on. Go. Roll over. Roll over. Nikki. Good boy. Okay. Think this is it. Which one do you think she is? That's her, Jim. It's gotta be next. Come on. Lavin was right, though, huh? She had something. Oh, so have I. Great legs. Two baked potatoes. The guys, huh? A bottle of wine. Nikki, I'm gonna have to go to sleep before I pass out. Night, honey. Oh. Well, Maxie Malone, you were something. You really were. Nuts, I missed it. What, hon? Look, mister, I about killed myself getting back here. How's about throwing it up again, would you? Just my reel. I don't give a hoot about the rest of the picture. You hear something, Al? I want to see my picture, fella. Come on, please. OK, I'll play. My? My who? Me. Maxie Malone. So, what are you standing there for, huh, buddy? One. Something in the wand. I knew I shouldn't have bought domestic. You're starting to get on my nerves. I'm here, you're awake, and I want to see my picture. You're not here. If you were here, I could see you, and I can't. So this whole thing is really a little absurd, and I'm just going to hit it. He'll stop yammer, and I'll give it a shot. I mean, it takes a lot of juice. Oh, hey. Where's the projector? Aren't we past that point yet? Jen. Honey. No, it's still Maxie. But if calling me Jen, honey, will get you to put my movie on. Jen. Honey. It's my, my wife. Oh, good for you. Now be a pal, put my movie on. It's a tape. Um, a, a videotape. Here. What's this thing my movie's playing on? A television set. Smallest movie screen I ever saw. Let's go. 
good. Wasn't I? Just like everybody said. Well, hell, at least I saw my picture. Thanks, Mr. you. It's me. No. It's definitely me. No, I don't have enough, uh, whatever it is to stick around. Ectoplasm. Cute and bright. Look, uh, sport, uh, give me a drink, will you? There's no point in me giving you a drink, because you do not exist except in my mind. Which I've now lost completely. Come on, just one little shot. Come on, be a pal. These things happen all the time. You read about it in the paper. I realize they don't normally happen to people like me, but then you tell me, huh? What's normal? Who's normal? What I saw was a phenomenon. Now it is gone, and there ain't no more phenomenon. So, you kiss your wife, you go to sleep, and you chalk it all up to experience. Who am I kidding? Jen, get up. Oh, Jen, I had a profound experience tonight. Listen, honey, I gotta tell you something. Please, please, please. Do you think I'm capable of a psychotic episode? You won't believe what happened. This isn't like the time we thought we saw moving lights in the sky. Jan, this spoke to me. I gave her a glass of wine. What I think I saw has major implications. Honey, honey, please, please. My imagination, it's running wild. Okay, listen to me, sweetie. Listen, huh? Okay, okay, all right. I know, I'm calming down. I am, I'm calming down. Listen, honey, that feels good. It does, it feels good. It's helping to calm me down, sort of. Honey, please. Listen to me, Jan. Honey, I know you're not taking this seriously. Could you do that a little to the left? There. Oh. Because I should... God, I shouldn't be taking this seriously either. That's a new one. Do that. Do it some more. Honey, I think I had... I think I had a profound experience tonight. And I think... I'm going to have another one. Please, sweetie, please. Wake up. Come on. Oh, Nikki, come please. on. Please. You know it. Not when I'm asleep. I know. Wake up. Please. Gosh. I can deal with this. I'm fine. I'm out of control. Okay. So it goes. Never take you for a movie buff, Mr. Cheney. You are full of surprises. Thank you. Miss Sheffer, I've been meaning to talk to you. A book scout came in with some incanabula, which I think would fit into our special collection. Mr. Cheney, well. can we talk about business later? First of all, I think it's important that we get to know each other as people. May I call you Nick? Of course. Call me Ophelia. Thanks. <laughs> I see by your finger that you're married. Eight years. Children? Not yet. We're considering one as soon as our budget allows. Have you had a chance to read my Mylar cover proposal? You have wonderful eyes, Nick. You should open them. Uh, Mylar is uh, suited to one-page documents. It's, it's non-reactive. Let's not pretend, Nick. Most women avoid married men. I improve them. <laughs> I really have to go. Mrs. Fink is minding my desk. Oh, well, let her mind. I don't mind. Do you? Nikki, you are coming to the Library Companions fundraiser, aren't you? Yeah. We'll be there. My wife and I. Oh, good. I'm looking forward to meeting the lucky woman. Me too. I, I mean, uh... <laughs> Excuse me.
I don't know what possessed me to buy it. I mean, it really isn't me. You should know what happened last night. I should have known you'd hate it. No, I do. I, I mean, I don't. It's just that it might be a little bright for old San Francisco money. Turn the car around. I couldn't tell you this this morning. I'll change my blue suit. Jan, this isn't going to be easy. It's about Maxie Malone. After we watched the movie and you went to bed, <laughs> you might have some slight difficulty believing this. Well, I believe you. I mean, I, I believe that you believe it. But I don't believe it. Oh, money. I mean, we really aren't drinkers, are we? I mean, don't you think that next time... I don't know what to do. Sir. Make it uh, two. Two? Thank you. Thank you very much. Got the tickets. Come on, you look terrific, okay? Stop. You know, I think we should go easy on the drinking, considering last night. <sighs> What's your pleasure? Oh, uh, I don't know. White wine spritzer would be fine. Hope soda with lime, please. Get all that hooch. Make mine a Bronx cocktail neat. A Bronx cocktail, eh? That takes me back a few years, lady. What on earth is a Bronx cocktail? Stick with me, kiddo. You'll find out. Jeez, what a crowd. Looks like a convention of blind dates. Thanks. Put something in there that make a girl dance the hoochie coochie, would you, handsome? Jan, Jan, if you think you're being funny, you're not. Woo! Ah! Thanks, baby kins. Now we're cooking with gas. How did a bear cat like you get that mixed up with a bunch like this? Only half of each couple has to be stuffy. I showed my half of the door. What's eating him? Oh, woo! This is the real thing, straight out of the bathtub. Oh, I'm disappeared. Barky, do it again. Listen, there's something I want to uh, explain to you the other day in the stacks. I didn't want you to get the wrong impression. I didn't want you to think that I was just fooling around with you. I was very serious. <laughs> Gee, I wish they'd play something I knew. Now, where did my chic go? Uh-huh. Where there's dancing, there's floozies. Went in the parking lot. Go pedal it elsewhere, lady. The goods look damaged. My man ain't buying. I beg your pardon. Consider yourself pardoned. I'll take a hike. What? I said scram. Hit the bricks. Take a powder. Oh, uh, this is my wife. <laughs> Jan. Jan, this is my chef for my new boss. Only during working hours. Now, uh, boss lady, would you take your arm off him, or should I just take your arm off? Period. Why, Nick, your wife is charming in a very primitive way. Stop it. This is embarrassing. He's off, boss lady. Mrs. Cheney, for your information, this party is part of Nick's job. Come on, Nikki. There are some people I want you to meet. Stop oh, oh. oh, I hate to waste such good hooch. Have one on you? Don't mind if I do.
Oh, Nikki, darling, I need another ticket. My glass seems to be empty. Crazy. She could fire me. My wife's not a drinker. She didn't know what she was doing. She isn't herself tonight. I have never been so humiliated in all my life. I will keep you on at the library in two conditions, Mr. Cheney. First of all, that a woman is gone by the time I get back. Second, make this up to me. I'll, I'll pay for the dry cleaning. <sighs> keep thinking. Answer me. Thank you, caught on yet. Oh. <laughs> Max. In the flesh, lover. You. What have you done with you? I, 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 I mean, what have you done with the other you, my wife? She'll be back. Where is she? Somewhere safe. Relax, kick off your shoes, have some fun. Okay, it's not happening, is it? Yeah, have a belt. I don't want a belt. I want you in, right here, right now. Have one little drink and maybe I'll let her back in. All right, one drink. Just one. I'm serious, Miss Malone. Mm.
up there, but, yeah, you know how people exaggerate. Well, here's to you. Hey, I got an important question to ask you. It's very important. The other night, after the movie, after your movie, the bedroom, was it you? It was nice, wasn't it? At least a little Jean, June. Jan. Whatever. It was more than nice till she showed up and scotched it. Jan, she doesn't know you're here, does she? Nope. It's just that after a while, I can't hold on or, or whatever, and she kind of pops back in. But I'm hanging on now, Nikki. No. Why not? Because I don't want to be unfaithful to my wife. Why am I telling you this at all? Here I am looking at my wife's face, my wife's body, and I'm telling you, I don't want to be unfaithful to you with you. This is nuts. Look at me, Nikki. I mean, really look at me. Nikki. I don't really look like her at all, do I? La, la, la. La, la, la. Sugar sweet, so is he. Bye, bye. <sighs> Nikki, do you realize that underneath these clothes is a totally naked girl? Okay, folks, that's it. Party's over. Uh, that's it. Says you. I don't know, sir. Good evening. Why don't you two come with me? Someone's always scotching the party. She's a comedian. <laughs> mm. We, uh, tonight's her anniversary. I thought we'd just retrace everything that we did. We, eight years ago, we came through the park and we stopped oh, here and we just thought we'd do the whole thing feel again. So good. We, I gotta get home anyway because the kids are asleep. And... <laughs> Yeah, right there. Oh, I'll pay for your pants. Uh, I, I, I'll give you a couple bucks for that. I mean, uh, I'll give you mm. five bucks. That'll wash right out. Don't worry. You want to ravish me? It's daylight, sweetheart. Oh, my God. Jack. I have a hangover. I thought you might. So here we have coffee, tomato juice, Worcestershire sauce, raw egg, and aspirin. Something's got to work. But I only had a white wine spritzer. Well, I guess it went easy on the spritz. Nick. Huh? Did I sing? Very well. Aspirin? And throw up? Well, a little. Did I talk to a police officer? Honey, yeah. That's who you threw up on. What? Look, honey, 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 all these things you're talking about, okay, last night, um, I mean, you got to understand, Jan, that it wasn't cheating exactly. Let me start at the beginning. I know all about it. No, damn it, it's you again. Oh, what's the diff? Big diff, all the diff in the world. That was a dirty trick. You want me, buddy, and don't say you don't. No, I don't. What are you doing? No, no, come on, don't, please, don't, don't. Stop it, come on. 
Cut it out! Cut it out! <laughs> Don't. No. Oh, what's this? <laughs> Will you cut it out? <laughs> what you learn these things, huh? Jam? Stop it, go away, will you? Leave us alone, please. Okay, okay. Enough's enough. I'm tired, I'm dusty, I'm angry, and I hurt myself. I can resist any woman from Eve to Greta Garbo. I'm in complete control. <laughs> Carry on, so. Gee, it's good to be back. Whoa, to make love again, I'd forgotten. Well, then remember with someone else, damn it. Well, I would if I could, but I can't. I mean, don't you see? It's my house. It's where I belong, so it's got to be Jane. June. Jean, or whatever the hell her name is. Think I like it? You got another thing coming. Thing, thing coming, thing coming. Well, whatever. <laughs> Look at this hair. Dull as dishwater. What a bum color. Pathetic eyebrows. Well, who needs these arms? Not bad legs. Though mine were better. You happen to be talking about my wife. I'll drop the subject like a shot, believe me. Wait a minute, where are you going? Yeah, hear that music is calling my name. Hold it, hold it. Maxie, Maxie! That's not a party! Will be when I get there. Lift him up, lift him up. Get him up there, Maxie. There you go. Now, suppose the cute fellas coming down the street. What would you do? Put on a big smile. Stick them out. Stick them out. Oh, swell. Oh, Jack! Oh, yeah. oh, good morning. Yeah, that's good for the upper Is that a shitty game? Hey, hiya, Nick. Come on in. The water's fine. Oh, Mr. T. Your wife is pumping it up. Great for the first time. How about you? Me? No thanks, Mr. Lavin. I couldn't keep up. Jan, you look at Doc. Oh, Nick! He, honest to God, he's done a drop. Dan, you love yourself. Oh, oh, oh. 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 You ain't seen nothing yet. Why don't we do another one? What do you say? Jan, why don't we go back downstairs? Do what? Talk. That's what I figured. Hey, I got a better idea. Let's go, pile into Nikki's ragtop, hit the train depot, see what big shots are heading down to LA. Oh, Jan, the Hollywood special stopped running years before you were born. Really? Okay, I got it. Let's go to the Fiverr Day. We can catch the early show at the Alcazar. Honey, they stopped doing shows at the Alcazar two years after Maxie and me stopped working there. Alice, you saw Maxie and me at the old Alcazar. Were we something or will we something? They don't have teams anymore now. No more teams. But never mind, kiddo. We were great. What was you they? were great. I we were true. You always told me I was great. You and Maxine were really. You couldn't have said it better. Hey, what's she talking about? Maxie? That's Trudy. Go on. Trudy, let's go as a kid. I mean, she's younger than. Don't get old, it means you died young. Oh. Oh. That was quite a class. Sit down, get the load it off. Trudy? Let me look at you. Look at me. Why, is there something funny? You look wonderful. Say, 
You wouldn't happen to have the, the music for the old Boston cream pie, would you? <laughs> I haven't had that request in years. How come you know all the stuff about the old days? Oh, it's just a hobby. I was wild about this tune. Maxie and me, we used to do a number to it. Every time we did it, brought down the house. You probably don't remember any of it, do you? Oh, oh, oh. like it was yesterday. I take a powder. You know, I, I just don't belong here anymore. I'm sorry if you didn't have much fun. Oh, to be absolutely honest, I haven't had so much fun in years. Well, uh, so long, Sheik. Thanks for everything. It was a real guess. It wasn't me. I, it couldn't have been me. I, I, I wouldn't do anything like this. Drink, dance, get drunk, make a fool out of myself. It was her. Oh. She was in my body. Honey, I told her to leave. Maxine Malone was in my body, and you slept with her. No, not really. I, I, I mean, it was you. All right, it was her, but... I am a woman, not a flop house. People just don't check in and check out whenever they feel like it. You're having an affair. Oh, oh come on. Once, once is not an affair. It was Maxine Malone in our bed that night we saw her damn movie. I didn't know that. And you passed out, and nothing happened. That was half the time. And, and then on the merry-go-round. I thought that was you, and the officer came. You thought it was me? Doing you know what on a merry-go-round at 4 a.m. in the morning? That's another half a time, and then today. That's two whole times. Do you want a divorce? What for? To marry Maxie Malone. Oh, come on, honey. Okay, honey. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. She's gone. She won't be back. I don't believe you. Yes, forgive her. That's me. No. No, she'll come back. If we start... You know, if we start, she's gonna come back. All right. We'll give it a few days, and then you'll see that I'm right. Leave it on. I'm scared. Don't touch me. Okay. Want another pillow?
shot, your extra. Good shot. I think we'll call that 70 yards, sir. 70. All right, wait one sec. Girls, you'll be very careful. He's going to hit another one just any second now. I got a problem. Bishop Campbell. Yes, sir. Do you believe in possession? La Segonie. That means why not in Polish. I'm taking lessons. I'm spending my vacation in Rome this summer. Your Excellency, I'm being possessed. Or, or at least I was yesterday. I, I just had to talk to somebody about it. Well, now, possession is a very shadowy area, Jan. Uh, it's very hard to prove. Even uh, specialists go to great lengths to collect evidence, real evidence. You can't just walk up to the church and say, I'm being possessed by the devil. I'm not. I was possessed by Maxie Malone, a movie actress who died in 1927. She used to live in our new apartment, but she hit a tree, and Nick and I watched one of her old movies, and then she possessed me and made me do terrible things. Uh, what, uh, what kind of terrible things? Well, I... I got drunk, and I sang at a party, and I made out with my husband, and I uh, told awful jokes, and I went on a joy ride. Oh, Jan, Jan. That's not known as possession. That's known as living. Now, let me know if she makes your head spin round and you start throwing up pea soup, huh? I guess if you came to me with the same story, I wouldn't believe you either. Now, you be a good girl and take a half hour and lie down in the outside office and you'll feel better. Much better, huh? Come on now. There's the good girl. That's it. All right. Oh, interruptions, interruptions. <laughs> She's still okay? Fine, fine, Mr. Levin, fine. And Maxie? Five days, no sign of her. Ooh. Nick, I've been thinking about it. You were tricked. You didn't know. It's not your fault. Not really. You did like her, though. Well, she was selfish and childish and exhausting, but fun. I gotta admit, she was fun. She wasn't you, though. Jan, we cannot go on indefinitely like this. Come on, let's go upstairs. Cookie out loud. If you would rather not. No, no. Meet me upstairs. You stay. Was that as good as Maxie? Well, there's no comparison. What's your mother's maiden name? O'Connell. What's your social security number? 26506-3702. I love you. Mrs. Cheney. Mrs. Cheney? Oh, hello, Father. Do you have a minute? I need to talk to you. Certainly. Can you imagine what it's like to have two personalities inside you? Frequently. One is 
normal, wholesome, and has values. And the other? The other has these incredible forbidden desires. So he told you. What? About the possession. Who? His Excellency. His Excellency? How did he find out? Because I told him. You've known all along? Well, actually, he said it wasn't possession at all. He, he told me it was simply living. He did? He did? But, Mrs. Cheney, it's getting worse. I mean, now, when I confiscate the girly magazines from the boys at school, before I burn them, I look at the centerfolds. I can't even look at staples without having impure thoughts. Why, a young piece of talent like you ought to be out there living it up. You know, Friar Tuck, if you dress up, you'd be a cute little guy. That's very kind, Mrs. Cheney. But I know in my heart I'm just not made for women. Why the heck not? You get all your parts working, don't you? Oh! I get it. You know, this dress don't mean you're out of the running. This is... Wonderful. Uh, you should be out in the town having a great time of things. Don't stop. Keep going. Nothing's happening. You're still a man's man, ain't you? Yes, but I'm a man of God first. Dan, you made an appointment for me. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Thank you. By using Mrs. Cheney as your vessel, I have been cured. You're so wise and so wonderful. Thank you. And thank you, Mrs. Cheney. Thank you. I will always appreciate what you've done for me. I have to go. I have to fill out some insurance forms. Funny guy. Reminds me of Fatty Arbuckle. Oh. He's a nice lad, but these adolescent obsessions of his... Nothing wrong with a good obsession, Bish. Uh, not to change the subject, Your Goodness, but uh, I need a leave of absence. We can start with a couple of weeks. Jan, I thought I said that this was not a good time. Now, this discussion is, as they say in Polish, konietz, finito. This discussion, as they say in English, is just starting. It may not be a good time for you, but it's a swell time for me. Now, if you don't like it, you can can me. Oh, Jan, this isn't like you. Are you feeling all right? Sure, I'm hitting on all sixes. Hitting on all sixes, huh? My, how colorful. Say, um, Jan, who's, um, who's your favorite movie star? Rudy Valentino, what's it to you? Oh, just inquiring. Do you remember the year that World War II ended? We had a second one? Oh, indeed. It was in all the papers. Not that that would mean anything to you, would it, Miss 1920s? <laughs> Get thee behind me, Satan! JFK! Mother Teresa! And you won $43 from Rabbi Nissenbaum in a poker game last week. Oh, Jan. Oh. Jan, is that you? Oh, oh, God. She was here, wasn't she? She came back. Oh, God. It's all right. It's all right, my child. It's all right, my child. I never should have doubted you. She's gone. She's gone. Everything's going to be fine now. See, she's gone. She's gone. Just sit there, sit there, rest and relax for a while, and I'll, I'll get you an aspirin, and everything's going to be fine. Fine. Just, just fine. Fine. Yes. They're all filled out. Mrs. Cheney just has to... Get me the exorcist from San Bernardino. The exorcist from San Bernardino. And if he's not there, get the one from Beverly Hills. Her books. Nikki, Maxie's back. I think the bishop's planning something in the next room. Get out of there. Meet me in front of the pizza place. I'll be there as soon as I can. Mr. Cheney, Nick, where are you running off to? My wife needs help. Oh, you could say that again. Nevertheless, we have a staff meeting in 10 minutes. Have to go on without me. Perhaps we can all go on without you permanently. You don't understand. 
My wife is in... Listen, I have had about as much as I can understand of you and your wife. If you walk out that door now, you are fired. Okay. Go ahead, fire me. Fire me. I'm not a towel boy in a country club. I'm an expert in rare books. I'm a professional. I'm paid to service the public's needs, not yours. All done. Don't be all here, but all finished. No kidding. Eight. I'm gonna take care of this. If we have to stay locked in a room for a month until she shows up, and when she does, I'll make her wish she was dead. I'll oh, have a good time trying, right, she? <laughs> Where's my wife? Sir, one fifty. The paper is one fifty. You heard him, Stiff. I'll pay the man for the yeah. paper, then get Please. out of my way. I'm warning you, Maxie. I don't want to have to resort to force. Oh, well, one of us has to. <laughs> you have your problems. I know you have your desires. Fine. I have mine. So does Jan. You remember Jan. Nice woman. The woman I love. Not that I expect you to care too much about that. All I want to know is why you have decided to come back. And then I'm going to kill you. You can't kill me. I'm dead. The best thing you could do is kill your wife's body, which ain't a bad idea. I mean, it does run real fast, though. I got to give her that. Well, if you don't like it, then get the hell out of it and leave us alone. Look, I'm not putting her down. I mean, she's fairly good. Fairly good? Is that as good as Maxie? You said it, brother. No comparison at all. You were there. Not there exactly. More like eavesdropping. It was a slow night. You were jealous. You came back to get Jan in trouble because you were jealous. Be damned. Maybe I was just a little bit jealous. That's why I came back. But it ain't why I'm staying. All bets are off. I was meant to have a career. A great, big, fat one. That's how it was supposed to happen, and that's how it's gonna happen. In color and sound on a great, big screen.
Oh, boy. We just got lucky. Oh, and don't get hot under the collar. I'll pay you back for all the supplies as soon as I get paid for my part. What? What do you think you're doing? Do you remember all those names we saw going up to some audition? Well, I came home, spruced up, went back and got into line. Then all we had to do was a Charleston. It went from 50 girls down to 10 girls down to one girl, me. It's just a one-day bit, but I think it's a real big show. They got a cowboy in a train in it. The director seems like a real hot shot. Anyways, I gotta get my beauty rest so I can do the best I can with the goods I'm stuck with. Wait, what, wait, oh! What makes you think Jan's gonna allow this? You're gonna talk her into it. I'm gonna strip and hit the sack. You wanna watch? Damn it, don't do that to me. Maxie! Maxie, be reasonable. How am I gonna talk Jan into this? It's one day, one day out of her whole life. Then I'll scram for real, I promise. She'll have to take the days off. That is, if we're not both unemployed. And she probably won't like what you've done to her hair, not to mention the fact she's never been particularly fond of you. You're a bright boy, you'll think of something. <sighs> Nikki. I know I made a mess of things. And I know you've been wonderful to me, and I shouldn't. But I'm asking for a gift. It's not so bad the being dead part, it happens to everyone. But to be cut off like I was. I keep saying that I'm so special that I that I could have made it, but I don't really know for sure. Please, Nikki. Help me prove this one thing to myself. One more day. Oh, it's a 6 a.m. call, so don't let her stay up much later. I need her sleep. Hello. Oh, she's back. What happened? <laughs> she ran away from me. And we saw a movie, but we didn't do anything, I swear. She's never going to leave, is she? She wants a favor from you. If you say yes, it's a day, and she promises not to come back. Wait, let me guess. A day in the sack with you. One more day to do a part that she got herself in a movie. She almost got me fired. Do you know how that makes me feel? If you're saying you don't exactly owe her a favor, I'll tell her your decision <laughs> is no. She really had a big day, didn't she? I wasn't around when she did that. Sorry. Well, I can't very well go to work looking like this. And I've got to make sure when I go to work that the bishop doesn't try to exorcise me. I'll have to take the day off. Oh, oh. Uh, you better wait till you decide before you do that. She has a 6 a.m. call. Oh. One day and it's over. She swore. She swore. She swore. She swore. Okay. I'll do it. Are you sure? Yes. I'll give her her chance and be done with it. I forgot to mention one little thing. She got me fired. In that case, we get the money from the movie. Here. Yeah, park it by the only way. Miss 
Malone, how are you? Very well, thank nice you. To see you. Listen, I want to show you right away to your dressing room. I hope you're very comfortable. We're going to get... Uh, it's right over here, my dear. We're going to get makeup and hair here as soon as possible hey, so we can get on the road. Chief. Okay? Yeah. Chief, I got to talk to you. Listen, we got hey, a problem. Dave, excuse got me. Problem. Dave, this is Miss Malone. Miss Malone, this is our assistant. Yeah, hi. Director. Howard, nice to meet you. Listen, the guy's agent called. Yeah. We do not have a leading man. Wait, wait, wait. Well, what are you telling me? The guy's going to be a little late here? No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. We don't have him. He's not coming. He ain't going to be here. Well, what the hell am I supposed to do about that? I mean, we have the... one choice. Pull the plug. We come back tomorrow. I don't know what else to tell you. Great. You can't. I, I mean, that would be terrible. What does this guy have to do? He just has to ride a stupid horse and look like a stupid hero. Now, sweetie, like I said, this is very simple. All you have to do is lie on the tracks. Hi, Dad. Exactly. Now, on cue, that locomotive is going to start coming in your direction. Should I scream? As loud as possible. Now, as the locomotive is getting very, very close to you... Nicky rides up on his big black horse, unties me, and saves the day. I love it. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Dave! Yes, sir, yes, Dave, sir. let's get it down those tracks. Let's get this right the first Absolutely. time. We can all go to lunch, all right? Yes, Ma'am, would you want to come this way? We're going to show you what happens. No, all you did wrong was fight him. He's as calm as a baby. If you just let him do, just let him do what he has to. Okay. Okay. Hold him, hold him, please, please. Okay. You get these reins. That's the brakes and right. steering wheel. There you go. Stop it for a second, will you, please? Okay, Dave, cue the train. Action train. Come ahead, train. Make you wet. A woman's best friend is no sweat. Great stuff, huh? I tell you, when the studios get a look at this, they're gonna beg me to direct features for them. You bet. Dave. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Come on. You're a real nice church. What is it? Uh, it's a deodorant commercial. I could have killed myself for a goddamn deodorant commercial starring my dog. You mean it's not a picture? It's for television. It's an advertisement. That's all it is? Something for that tiny little screen? To sell something to make you not... Sweat? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Hey, I'll tell you what. Borrow one of my suits. You go on a couple of job interviews. I'll hang around and bark at the mailman. You expecting anyone? I'll get it this time. You get it the next. You're welcome. Good morning. Is your Campbell's office? We have to talk. Uh, one moment, please. What are you doing here? Let's go to lunch. I can't. I just took two days off. The bishop still looks like he wants to burn me at the stake. Tell him you're normal again. Nikki, I can't. Hello? 
Oh, yes, Mrs. Kilgore, I gave the bishop your message. She's taking a half hour for lunch. Good idea. Take an hour. Fine, he'll talk to you in an hour and a half. All right. Bye-bye. Thanks. That wasn't so hard, was it? What? First. They want her to test for the starring role in the remake of Cleopatra, The Day After Tomorrow, in Hollywood. What? They want her, you, to test for the starring role in the remake of Cleopatra, Day After Tomorrow, in Hollywood. How did that happen? The director showed the commercial. They didn't want the director. They wanted Maxie Malone. They called the house. Well, what did you tell them? She was out. I was her manager. I get back to them. Her manager? I lost my head. Oh. If you don't want to do it, say so. Nikki, there's no way I... You don't have to. Maxie does. You'd like me to, wouldn't you? You wanted to come back. You know how silly it is to be jealous of a ghost? Not as silly as being in love with one. Let's just forget the whole thing. I'll tell him no. The thing is, I know how Maxie feels. I mean, I get flashes now and then. I never dreamed that anyone could want anything so badly. I, I almost envy her. You'll do it. I'll think about it. I'll give you my answer when I get home from work. You really think about it? Mickey, I'll give you my decision when I get home from work. Uh, yes, Mr. Frank. Yes, I'll have her call you. Yes. I don't know where he is. You'll have to ask her. I don't know where she is either. When does the exorcist arrive? Tomorrow morning, early. Now, you keep on top of the situation, and the moment he arrives, you send him to her house, all right? Yes, yes. Ah, Jan, you're back. Oh, fine, fine. How are you feeling? You look wonderful. Why don't you sit down for a while? Yes, Your Excellency. I, I mean, no. I mean, it doesn't matter, Your Excellency. I don't understand. I uh, don't mean to be rude, but I have two weeks' vacation coming, which I'd like to take starting right now. I'll go ask Sister Michael to arrange for a temporary while I'm away. You may fire me if you wish, but my mind is made up. Good day, Your Excellency. Wait! Who's your favorite movie star? Dustin Hoffman. Why? Oh, no reason. Uh, look, uh, why don't you stay for an extra day or so? Uh, we're, uh, we're planning a uh, surprise party for Father Tyrone's birthday tomorrow. But his birthday was last month. Oh. Well, then, this will really be a surprise, won't it? I'll see you in two weeks, Bishop Campbell. I'm sure you'll be fine till I get back. Goodbye. Oh, drat. I'm 50 years late. By the way, Janice insisted on one condition. She's there in bed, and you keep your hands and the rest of it to yourself. One slip, she says she'll push you out and scotch the whole thing. Spoil sport. So I gotta leave it. Do I have a choice? <laughs>
gold digs, huh? Hey, Al. Let's see what's in the bedroom. All right. <laughs> The Derby or the Grove? No, neither one. We got a deal. I want to go to bed. Oh, what a good idea. With my wife. Look, one person who shouldn't get shafted on this deal is Jan. I want her back now. Nicky, what's the difference between now or a little bitty hour from now? Now, Maxie. You're going to be sorry. Maxine Malone does not offer herself lightly. Oh, stop it. Look, it's not the point. You promised something. You understand me? We made a deal. We got a bargain. You do it. You just stick to it and you do it. Now, come on. It's me. Wow. What a place. That's what Maxie said. Oh, let me get it. Let me get it. Hello? Uh-huh. Okay, that'd be fine. Thank you. They have the test team downstairs. They're sending it up. Well, she'll have to study it in the morning. Uh, I threw her out for the night. She's too mad to come back now. <laughs> Gotta make a piddle. She leaves me with her hangovers, her indigestion, and now her exhaustion. Believe me, it's just as tiring to be with her. Has to be her. Nick, I love you. I love you too. Nick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Josh Daniels, your director. And I certainly hope you're the girl we've been looking for so we can proceed with our little epic. This way? Um, Harry, please. Uh, I, I want you to meet Harry Hamlin, the young actor playing Mark Antony. Harry, I want you to meet Miss Maxine Malone. Pleasure. I hear you're terrific. Now, we'll go up and set this... Excuse me. Take me home. Are you crazy? That is Harry Hamlin over there. He just said something to me. He seems like a very nice person. I don't want to throw up all over Harry Hamlin. She'll be here. You know she wouldn't miss this for the world. She's putting you on the hot spot because she resented my throwing her out last night. Now you just take a breath. You get back over and have a good time. Come on. Okay, we're ready. Thank you. Uh, this way, please. Now, you will start at the top of the bed and... Thank you so much. Now, you will start at the top of the bed and gently work your way down to the pillows uh, where you'll end. Then Harry will make his entrance and... Well, let's make a start. Let's roll. We're rolling. We've got speed. Marker. We've got marker. <clears throat> and... Action. You have the first line. Yeah. 
Leave me now and you will never lay eyes on Egypt again. If Rome cannot come to Egypt, perhaps Egypt will come to Rome. Yes, I will come, but as a partner, an equal, not a slave. For 300 years... Cut! Cut! Is there a problem of some kind? A problem? Some reason that you've chosen to do the scene. Sans acting. Excuse me. Nikki, I can't do this. She gets better after a few tries. Why don't you do it again, okay? Come on. All right. Take two. Let's roll. We're rolling. Mm. Action. Uh, for 300 years, the Ptolemies have ruled Egypt. My father was a king, and his father before him, and I am a queen. You may think you can conquer Egypt, but you can't because I am Egypt and you can never conquer me. Cut. Honey. Come on, wake up. Honey, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Okay, wake fellas, up. joke's over. Uh, Very Aubrey, funny, Art. What are you doing? Very they funny. They love you. Kill the light. Think you're great. Fabulous. Okay. Miss Malone. It was a pleasure meeting you. And, by the way, you were brilliant. Good luck. Who's a cute-looking guy in the skirt? Max. How's about another take? I promise you won't be soft. Uh, thanks. Uh, well, I really don't think I've got it in me. Leave me now, and you will never lay eyes on Egypt again. If Rome cannot come to Egypt, perhaps Egypt will come to Rome. Yes, I will come, but as a partner, an equal, not a slave. For 300 years, the Ptolemies have ruled Egypt. My father was a king and his father before him. And I am a queen. You might think you can conquer Egypt, but I am Egypt, and you will never conquer me. Call that a victory. If you kiss me and I do not kiss you back, there is nothing. But if you kiss me and I give you my lips, and together we create a kiss. And if we make love, then we make love together. Then we are partners, equals. And together we will make both the greatest empire and the greatest love the world has ever seen. at the Ambassador Hotel, where we hope to get an interview with Maxie Malone, the young woman chosen over hundreds of hopefuls for the most sought-after role in Hollywood this year. The hunt for the new Cleopatra has been exhaustive, reminiscent of the searches for Scarlett O'Hara. as the new Cleopatra, following the footsteps of such greats as Claudette Colbert and Elizabeth Taylor. Miss Malone. Yes, tell us. What do you think of Harry? Great kisser. Did you know that you would be cast? I had my fingers crossed. How does it feel, Miss Malone, to have been chosen over hundreds of other actresses? I'll tell you how it feels. It feels like I'm alive. You know, I'm sure that everyone is curious to know Miss Malone. We'd like to ask one more question about during the filming of the movie, please. Thanks, Nikki. 
Thank Jan for me too, will you? <sighs> what a night. What a day. All my dreams. Everything I ever wanted. And it's just beginning. Miss Malone! Can we speak to you just for a second, Miss Malone? Miss Malone, can we talk to you just for a second, please? Please, Miss Malone, can we talk to you just for a second? Please? Come on, I know a place. <laughs> Finally know I've got it. I was meant to be a star, Nikki. Just like one of those up there, a big, bright, shiny, beautiful star that'll last forever and ever. And if this picture is good, and I know it's gonna be, I just know it, then I'll just get a, a more big picture next time, and then we'll go Can't on. Can't do it, Maxie. What do you mean? I was so great tonight. Everyone said so. You said so. That's not the point. I want to shoot for six months. So? Well, then you want to stick around for the opening. And then another picture. And another. When's it going to stop? I don't get you. First time around. You never got to have your screen test. Now you know. You know. You would have been a star. It's gonna have to be enough. What? Oh, because. Lots of reasons. Because you cannot take away someone else's life because yours was over too soon. And because I want my wife back. And, and because... Yeah. Life's tough, so are some mistakes. Big deal, dime a dozen. But if I vanish into thin air, they'll never forget me. I'll be one of the great Hollywood mysteries. A legend they'll remember as long as there are movies and people to write about them. Nikki, I'll be a star. Do me a favor, will you? Don't say anything. Only get sticky and you've been swell up to now. It's been a ball, you know. A real ball. So long, Sheik. We'll see you then. I just do. And when she left, I... I sensed from her the most incredible feeling of peace.
service chicken. Very bad indigestion. Have a beautiful day. <laughs> well, I guess we fooled them. <laughs> you should have seen the lady's face when I asked if I could buy her uniform. <laughs> indigestion. Seven hours, we'll be back home. You know, it's only three hours to Mexico. It's me, Nikki. She's not coming back. I was born in Kankakee. My maiden name is O'Connell. My social security number is 26506-3702. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and I love I you. I love you. <laughs> you know, it's only eight hours to Tahiti. It's 11 hours to Paris. It's 22 hours to Australia. It's five minutes to a motel. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.